So we're on our way home and I noticed that I'm almost at 50,000 miles on the car. I'm going to see and I'm like very close. It's like right on the border of 50 and 4999. I'm going to see if I can actually get in the driveway and it be 50,000 miles before it turns over. It's going to be very, very close. thousand miles guys it kind of sucks but it's a uh, that's a milestone with the car I guess bound to happen when you drive it every day been at uh, oh, a little over a year and put about 14,000 miles on it so you just seen I hit 50,000 miles so uh, I wanted to do a little review of the charger itself. Uh, I wanted to do a little quick walk around since I've had the car for a year or two as well. Uh, I wanted to do a year review and a 50,000 mile review in one video. Uh, but I have personally put 14,000 miles on this car and uh, it came with about 36,000 miles. But uh, when I got it, it was fine didn't have anything that needed done to begin with when I bought it but uh, overall it's been good I'm gonna go into nitty-gritty details of it and what I think about the car itself so let me take you guys around okay guys this is 2014 Dodge Charger RT with road and track pack so this car has been very solid for me I haven't had any major issues with it at all uh, the only thing I could really say about it is the alternator issue. Now, that's a recall. Uh, I really do think Dodge had dropped the ball when they had this recall come out. Because these cars were having trouble with the alternator well before Dodge even released the recall for it and there's been numerous people that have had problems with the alternators and uh, they should have just been more on the ball with uh, a recall for the uh, alternator challenge that they had but uh, mechanically it's been sound pretty sound I haven't had any major issues with it other than the alternator but uh, the amount of power that it has for the 5.7 liter Hemi, I think it's great for a first uh, V8 for me. And overall, really, it's still a pretty stout car. But I think, uh, I think a 392 would be nice. Is it necessary? No, because I've heard numerous people have said that the 5.7 liter is much better to modify. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and open up the hood, guys, and I'm going to show you under the hood. So here it is underneath the hood. Uh, I have the cold air intake on here. It's the K&N. Um, I got that off Craigslist very cheap just because I really couldn't see you spend $300 for a colder intake but uh, that really just made the car louder I don't think it did much in the beginning but I got the 87 millimeter ported throttle body and the real nice thing about the ported throttle body is that that I got it's an actual Chrysler Mopar part so it doesn't void the warranty 
uh, and that was from Mo's performance. But uh, the engine, when I did all these modifications to it, including the headers, um, it took very well to them. It didn't uh, give me a whole lot of issues. The only time I had an issue was when I did the uh, headers. And uh, that's mainly because of how tight it is. And I'll show you here in a second. But uh, if you guys haven't seen, just look how tight it is down in that space. There's not much room. Not much room at all. You have to get underneath the car to get to it. There's no way you're going to get it from the top. Even if you take the valve cover off, it's still going to be very difficult to get to. But uh, overall, the engine itself, very solid. Um, I know mine's very dirty right now. I have to get that cleaned up. But uh, like I said, it's a daily driver. And driving daily driving this hasn't been a bear at all. And uh, we'll cover that next with gas mileage. Okay, so we're in the car now. Um, the gas mileage has been fairly impressive for a V8, if you ask me. With it being a 5.7 liter Hemi, I mean, that's 345 uh, cubic inches. Uh, most of your modern day cars will take like the Civic, for example. Uh, it could be 1.8 to 2.2 uh, liter four cylinder. And you're getting probably about 36 miles per gallon highway city if you're being good with it. Uh, for this, when I started doing the mods to it, it actually increased the uh, gas mileage quite a bit. So if I behave myself on the road and actually pay attention to uh, my surroundings and traffic and everything, I can get around 26 miles per gallon, which is very good for a V8, I think. Um, and it has a lot to do with the NDS system that the uh, engine has. So if you don't know what the NDS system is, it's a multi-displacement system. So what it does is it shuts off four cylinders at a certain RPM. So uh, if you're sitting under 2,000 RPM and not uh, revving hard or anything like that, uh, the MDS is on and only four cylinders are firing. So really, it is a gas saver, but it's a fun killer. I mean, you bought a V8. Did you buy it just for gas mileage? If you did, you bought it for the wrong thing. But... Uh, you can do MDS deletes for these. They can be expensive. Um, you have to get the right tune and you have to get the right lifters because you have to get uh, uh, solid lifters instead of rolling lifters because the rolling lifters is the MDS. And from what I've heard, the uh, rolling lifters uh, can actually go bad pretty quickly compared to a solid lifter. But... Uh, other than that, I mean, the MDS system is great. Uh, there's not much you can really do to improve it, I don't think, mechanically. Uh, I'm not that intuitive with uh, the engineering of the engines, so I couldn't say for sure. But from the way the system sounds, it's a flaw, in my opinion. Uh, I don't think Dodge went the wrong way when they did that. They made these cars to be fleet cars to sell to make money. So... The 5.7 liter Charger, Challenger, those are fleet cars, especially the Charger, because it is four doors, it's a family car, uh, it's there for the family in general. So, uh, space-wise on the inside of the car, fantastic for long haul driving. Uh, every so often, my wife and I will uh, go out out of town for about a two and a half hour to three hour drive. And uh, when I had my 07 TL, it had bucket seats and they sat low to the ground. And after a couple hours in that, you were ready to get up and move. This thing, you can lounge in it. It's comfortable. You can continuously drive without having to resituate yourself or anything like that. The back seat, you can fit a body back there uh, and sleep pretty easy. Uh, we got a... Uh, 56 pound dog 
Uh, she is a coonhound terrier mix. And so she fits there back there pretty well. Uh, she's got plenty of room to roam around, and I have a little mat for her. But there's plenty of room back there for the dog. If you have kids or even adults, fit very well back there. I've even sat back there myself before just to see how well it is. And there's plenty of room for a big guy like me. Uh, trunk space. There's a lot of trunk space. Uh, we fit two, uh, two duffel bags, four pillows, a whole bunch of groceries, and... Uh, a dog, the dog's uh, carry bag. I mean, there's a bunch of room in that truck. Uh, so whenever we're traveling, we usually take mine because of the extra space. But, uh, I mean, the trunk is spacious. You can put a lot of stuff back there. And one of the nice things that uh, this has that my TL didn't is that the back seats fold down. So if you have something long, you can fit it in there. Uh, I really like that. But, uh... Overall, I think Dodge did a very good job with this car, uh, even to make it a fun car. So, to Dodge, Chrysler, Fiat, you guys did a good job on this. Uh, guys, keep up the good work. Um, what I would really like to see Dodge do next is actually come up with a uh, 426, 440 Hemi, third gen and put it in a production. That would be awesome. I would definitely buy that car. I would trade the Charger in for it. But uh, guys, you have a good one. Remember, like, subscribe, comment, and I'll see you in the next one.